Welcome to the show. <laughs> so good to have you. Oh, that's so nice. This is this is amazing. They don't do that when I go home. What do you? That would be creepy if they just followed you home cheering as you're just walking home. My Welcome kids. to the show. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to be so here. So good I to have you, you man. I love what you do. Thank you very much. I, I love what you do. Great. I, I love what you do. Your intellect. Oh, it's, it's thank really you. No, this great. This is about man. you, Ma. This is about you. <laughs> Welcome to the show and um, congratulations on everything. I I, I feel like. You know, you were always known because you're an amazing actor, but but with the Avengers, it's such a it's such a monumental event. Mm. Like life changes overnight. Did it change even more when now you were like intelligent Hulk? Because before there was like no, because now there was like a, there was like a ship. Yeah. Yes. There, there was Hulk, and then there was you know Banner. Yes. So you had the separation. Yes. So Hulk was cool, and then you were like the scientist, but there was Hulk. Yes. But then you became intelligent Hulk. Now it's like your face is on the Hulk. Yes. Kids must have been like now you're like the bulk. Hulk. You bulk. Banner Hulk. Banner Hulk. Yeah. Yeah. Did you feel that change? It, it was huge. It was, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it was smart and huge. <laughs> <laughs> you, are, you, you you've traveled all over the world now since that. You actually just got back from Tokyo. Yes. Do people recognize you in Japan as Hulk as well? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they yell, Hulk, Hulk! <laughs> <laughs> It's funny, Hulk in, in Japanese is the same in English. You don't think of that. No, it's not something you think. Yeah, you don't. No. That's, that's properly international. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never thought of that. I, it's, I crossed over. Yeah, you have. You should actually just be Hulk Ruffalo now. You should just take that and act. <laughs> you should just take it as Hulk. I walk down the street and people are like, Yo, Hulk! Hulk! Yo, Hulk! <laughs> <laughs> And my son says, put your hood up. <laughs> um, it's your hair. You both have the same <laughs> hair. <laughs> this movie, I feel like, is, is a departure for you, but at the same time, in many ways, it's the same theme. You, you're playing a real-life hero in this movie, Dark Waters. You yeah. know, it's, it's a story of, of a lawyer who really stumbles upon a story of, of, a, of a chemical company that's, that's polluting a piece of land, that's killing people, killing livestock, and it's, it's just like one of the crazy stories. What's even more crazy about it is that it's true. How did you even stumble upon this? Uh, it was actually a... Um, it was in the New York Times Magazine uh, by Nathaniel Rich, and it was, a, it was an article called um, The Lawyer That Became DuPont's Worst Nightmare. Right. And uh, I read it, and I, I couldn't believe it. It, w it was a horror, and it was probably the biggest corporate crime and cover-up in American history that nobody knew about, with uh, a lawyer that had normally been um, someone who would uh, defend chemical companies, mm -hmm. uh, is, was now in the place of actually defending uh, this farmer that he knew growing up as a boy. Um, that, uh, that insisted that his cows were being poisoned by DuPont. It was really interesting to watch because, you know, you see this farmer who doesn't know much about this fancy world, but he reaches out to this little boy who he knows as a lawyer, and he says, hey, my cows are dying. I think something is going wrong here. Can you look into it? And the lawyer discovers a world that you says It's one of the most nefarious stories yeah. that ever happened in America. But when you, when you read through it and, you know, when you, when you created this film, like, was there a part of you going, although the story seems absurd, it's, it's almost normal? Well, it... It, it's, it felt like a, a story that we keep hearing again and again where a corporation <laughs> knows that they're hurting um, their clients, that they're hurting the public. Right. Um, their, their science shows them that they're hurting the public, and they hide that science, and they keep hurting the public anyway. Whether we're talking about opioids, whether they're talking about climate change, or they're talking about Monsanto and, and glyphosate, whether we're talking about um, fracking and what it does to water, it's the same story over and over right. again. And I just saw it so beautifully told with this amazing guy, Rob Balot, the guy I play, yeah, and he's so humble, and it's so well and thoroughly researched that 
I thought, wow, this is, <laughs> first of all, this is a freaking horror story. Right. But it's real. But it's also the story of how some legacy corporations in America are killing us, destroying us willfully. They know they're doing that. And they're doing it simply to make a buck. And we see it happening over and over and over again. And now I think we're having a moment where we're talking about it. Mm -hmm. We know it's happening. We know it's happening. Um, we see it all around us. We, we, we have a distrust, whether you're on one side of the aisle or the other. It's, it's the same kind of discussion. It's this distrust of this system that is, is um, using us uh, to just drain our pocketbooks and lead us to hospitals where we have to pay for our own health care after they poisoned us. <laughs> it, it, yeah. <laughs> It's a story that far too many people have had to live through and are continuing to live through today, you know, where corporations have found ways. You saw as the, in the clip we saw where, where the scientists now work for the corporations and we don't know what many of the facts are. From the story, though, you know, you play a hero in the story who, who really is like an on-the-ground hero who just works against a powerful organization to get justice for many of the people who have been harmed. What do you think inspires heroes like this? Because he didn't have much to gain. In fact, he had everything to lose. What make So you have the heroes in the, super mo in the in Marvel movies, that, and they're, they're the heroes. You want, you, they're heroes because you want to be them, right? Right. But then you have the heroes in the world that are heroes because you don't want to be them. Wow. They're heroes because their journey is the one that a human being has to make that is like the difficult choices. Mm -hmm. And that's what this man was. And I, what it ultimately was in him was a belief that when people learn the truth, they'll do the right thing. And so if he could just lay it out and, and show them over and over again the facts and, 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 and create a reasonable argument that people will do the right thing, all the way up to the CEO of DuPont, mm -hmm. who he gets to depose in the movie, which is one of my favorite scenes. Um, and he believed in justice. And once he was on that road, it took him 20 years. He's still fighting it. Right. Um, but he really believes that people will do the right thing, and it's, it's that part of him that I think kept him going. You, you end the film, and this is not one of those movies where a spoiler is something you need to worry about, because it's a, it's a beautiful story, it's a powerful story. Thank it's you. really informative as well. But at the end of the film, it, it, it's really strange because it doesn't end with just the regular happy ending, because... He you doesn't know, drive away in an SUV. Right, right. The company won... I mean, the company was forced to pay $700 million, I believe, in fines for what they had done. But, yeah. but you choose to end the film with facts in and around how much people have been affected, how many people have been affected, how, you know, widespread this problem is, how many chemicals are in our bodies, how many poisons have been spread throughout the environment. Why choose to end a film like that? You know, everyone would say, no, just... End it in the, you know, in the flashy way, you win the court case, you drive off into the sunset. Why did you choose to end it in that manner? That was a big um, discussion that we had uh, as filmmakers and as producers and as, um, you know, our, our, our marketing and all that. But that's the reality we're living in. And, and what the film does is it asks us to take action. It, it, it doesn't give you a savior. It, we are our saviors. We are the ones that we've been waiting for. There is no one person that's going to do this. And it's time for us now to do these things. <laughs> if anyone watching this movie, yeah, thank you. I don't think they won't be moved, man. They're definitely going to be moved. Doc Waters will be in theaters everywhere. December 6th. Mark Ruffalo, everybody.